In 1898, a Russian named Pyotr Koslov came to the Subash ruins. A huge stone weighing 2,000 kilograms among the ruins of the Jauhuli temple attracted his interest. People with Kozlov tried to persuade him to abandon this apparently ordinary stone. But Kozlov was adamant. He had the huge stone cut in half, put the two pieces on a sled, and dragged them to the Kuchar county seat. Kozlov knew about the stone and its secrets. In Great Tang Records on the Western Region, Xuanzang wrote about a large off-white jade stone in the Jiaohuli Temple that supposedly contained a large footprint of the Buddha Sakyamuni. It was an object of reverence for Buddhists and the greatest treasure of the Jiaohuli Temple. Kozlov believed he had found this stone and wanted to take it back to Russia. An experienced jade craftsman from Hertian heard that the stone was in Kuchar. All he knew about it was that it was a very similar. So he urged the local government and people to keep the stone. Kozlov didn't know how to transport the stone anyway. Moreover, he was about to launch an even greater expedition, so he regretfully left Kuchar without a stone. One year later, Kozlov's expedition discovered a lost ancient city of the Western Xia dynasty, which was given the honorary name of Blackwater. Kozlov became world famous overnight, but he never got the chance to return to Kuchar. The two halves of the stone were reportedly kept in the courtyard of the Kuchar County Government Building until 1964, when they were supposedly sent to the Beijing Museum of Natural History. But museum personnel say the two halves have never been in its collection. The owner antique shop claimed that the two pieces were found in a nearby riverbed by a savvy businessman a few years ago. No one knows for sure what happened to them. Putting aside the issue of the stone's whereabouts, the crucial question is, was it really the Buddha's footprint from Jiaohuli Temple? Pei Xiaozong doubts it. He saw the stone with his own eyes in Kucha. Chia 它是黑格,就是记得是黑格状 The story of Kozlov finding a jade stone in the Subash ruins and leaving it in Kucha is just an oral tradition.
There are no official records, and Kozlov never mentions the incident in his reports. Perhaps the legend was developed to make up for losing so many relics and suffering so many indignities. Actually, the stone itself is not so important. It's the beliefs surrounding it that really matter. The belief of a person or nation often centers around a physical object, such as a piece of jade. Once such a belief takes hold, it can be as firm as a piece of jade. Leaving aside whether or not the stone was stolen, there is another treasure from ancient Kuchar. famous Buddhist monk and translator, Kumara Jiva. Xuanzang was a famous translator of Buddhist texts. Everyone knows about his pilgrimage to India to study Buddhist scriptures. But few people know that he was not the first. The first was a monk from Kucha. Xuanzang went from east to west, but Kumarajiva went from west to east. In 68 AD, Emperor Ming of the Han Dynasty built the White Horse Temple in Luoyang to hold Buddhist statues and scriptures to symbolize the introduction of Buddhism into central China. But it's not known when Buddhism reached the western region. Buddhism reached the western region primarily through a southern route across the Pamir Mountains and a northern route through the kingdom of Shula and then on to Kucha. Buddhism passed through Central Asia and many countries west of China before reaching Central China. For this reason, the Chinese versions of Buddhist scriptures contained many errors because of the different translations made as Buddhism spread east. Countries west of China were better able to preserve the original meaning because their languages were closer to the ancient Indian language. They also shared cultural elements and traditions with ancient India. Central China sorely needed an expert on the culture of ancient India, the countries to the west, Oriental Buddhism. In the 4th century AD, Kyu Mo Yen, son of a prime minister of a small Indian kingdom, came to Kucha. The king of Kucha, Bai Chun, not only made him a state teacher, but gave his younger sister, Jiva, to him in marriage. Jiva was an intelligent and devout follower of Buddhism, she became pregnant soon, and they got married. Historical records indicate that she frequently visited Jiaohuli Temple to hear Buddhist preaching and was fluent in Sanskrit. She gave birth to a boy named Kumara Jiva.
After seeing graves and scattered human bones on a trip, Jiva decided to become a nun. Whereupon, seven-year-old Kumara Jiva decided to become a monk. Kumara Jiva became well acquainted with Buddhist scriptures when growing up. At nine, his mother took him to today's Kashmir, a thriving Buddhist center to receive an education. When Kumara Jiva returned three years later, he passed through the kingdom of Shula, where an incident changed his approach to Buddhism. Buddhism began in the 6th century BC. After the Mahayana branch arose in the 1st century BC in northwest India, Buddhism was divided into the Mahayana and Hinayana branches. The goal of Hinayana is self-cultivation. The goal of Mahayana is supreme enlightenment. Mahayana became popular among the southern route through Yutian, while Hinayana became popular on the northern route that went through Kucha. Kumara Jiva had always studied Hinayana, but in Shula he began vacillating between the two branches after studying with several highly respected Mahayana monks. Chu是這個地區呢,實際上是呃鑽木是早年出家的時候他信的還是應該說一些有步,也是小層的一個步派,就步派佛教吧,一步。可是後來他在南南部,就他那個朋友南園的時候,他就接受了大成的教義,改信
In 383, Pujian sent General Lu Guang and a large army to conquer Kucha. Pujian, who was a Buddhist, assigned Lu Guang another important task. He wanted Lu to escort Kumara Jiva back to Chang'an after taking control of Kucha. Lu's army soon arrived at Kucha, and Kumara Jiva tried to convince the king of Kucha, Bai Chun, to peacefully turn over the city. But he refused, and his army was defeated. Kumara Jiva was supposed to be Lu's honored guest, but he became his prisoner. Although he had willingly started out on this trip, he was now being forced to go. It seemed a strange fate. Lu considered Kumara Jiva unimportant and didn't take him back to Chang'an as ordered. He was, however, amazed by the luxury of the Kucha royal palace. He was even more impressed with Kucha wine. Lu Guang was not a Buddhist and enjoyed drinking. He had no use for the strict rules of Kumara Jiva. He forced Kumara Jiva to get drunk locked him in the bridal chamber with a Kucha princess and forced him to marry her. Lu tricked Kumara Jiva into breaking Buddhist discipline. Jiva feared that the senior monk's prediction that he would break with Buddhism might have now come true. A year later, a drunk Lu Guang was on his way to Chang'an with the Kumara Jiva when he learned in Liangzhou that Emperor Pu Jian had died in the Battle of Fei Shui. Lu decided to occupy Liangzhou and became its king. He established the later Liang with its capital in today's Wu Wei in Gansu province. Kumara Jiva was no longer of any use to him, but Lu discovered that Kumara Jiva was very wise. He made him his astrologer, a post that he held for 17 years. Although Kumara Jiva appeared to be no longer practicing Buddhism, he was studying the Chinese language and Han culture. His knowledge of Sanskrit, the Kucha language and Buddhism gave him insights into both Eastern and Western cultures. Unbeknown to anybody else, he was creating a unique form of Buddhism with Chinese characteristics. Predictions are often inaccurate. In 394, there was a war between Emperor Yao Xing of the later Qin, a Buddhist, and the later Liang to recover Kumara Jiva. At last, he was able to return to Chang'an. This is the Tsao Tang Temple, 50 kilometers from Xi'an, when the Kumara Jiva was sent in 401. 
Emperor Yao Xing appointed him as a state teacher with 800 students and the head of 3,000 monks. He also began the huge project of translating Buddhist scriptures into Chinese. Now, in his 50s, Kamara Jiva was at last able to show what he could do. He oversaw the translation of 74 volumes in total and 392 scrolls of Buddhist scriptures. Kamara Jiva's translations became the standard, replacing the other various translations of Buddhist scriptures circulating in central China. The development of Buddhism with Chinese characteristics was an important milestone in the introduction of the religion in China. He even created a new style in Chinese that accented the literary and poetic aspects of the scripture. Incredibly, some Chinese phrases and terms still in use today were created by a Kucha monk from India. Buddhism has had a strong impact on Chinese culture and thought. Kamara Jiva promoted the adoption of Buddhism in China and made it part of Chinese tradition. On July the 15th, 2011, Buddhists from Japan's Shingonji Temple came to the Saotang Temple. It took several centuries, but the influence of Kamara Jiva eventually spread to Japan and South Korea. His translation of the Diamond Sutra and Lotus Sutra will always be relevant. Kamara Jiva passed away in Chang'an in 413 at the age of 70. His tongue reportedly did not burn when his body was cremated. People recalled that he had predicted that if his translations were without error, that his tongue would survive cremation unharmed. The predictions made by the senior monk and the words of his mother all seem to come true in the life of Kamara Jiva. Think about the advice he gave King Bai Chun when Lu Guang was preparing to attack Gu Cha. Think about Lu Guang who forced him to go against Buddhist teachings and become his astrologer. Through his strong faith, Kamara Jiva showed that our lives are not predetermined, that we can be masters of our own fate. It may no longer be so important if Buddha's jade footprint has been lost or is still buried. That wise monk has become the Buddha's footprint, a footprint that has impacted the hearts and minds of all Chinese people. Xinjiang was in chaos in 1912. Before he was allowed to go to Kucha, the German explorer Albert von Lecoq had to promise to accept responsibility for any possible consequences, including death. His destination was the Kizil Caves. Don't miss part four, the Buddha Caves.